Hi. There's a danger that any recording on artificial intelligence will go out of date very quickly, but uh, it's probably important that we just consider the, the state of play at the moment. Uh, and we'll do a few minutes on that. Okay. So um, uh, the first thing to talk about is generative AI, which is a subset of artificial intelligence, but it's the one that's been getting all the tension in the last 18 months since the launch of ChatGPT. It really is just a mindless statistical prediction of the most likely next word. That's all it is. Um, but having said that, it is just surprisingly reliable. If you ask it a question, it's going to it's going to predict the first word, then the next one and the next one. And it's amazing how how accurate and useful the output is. It's not artificial general intelligence. It doesn't understand what it's saying. It's not able to do reasoning, but it's still very effective. But it's early days and change will come quickly. Um, and I must say that it's not so much even increasing the power of artificial, artificial intelligence, what the generative AI can do, but what products will emerge. It's early days. We'll probably see a lot of products, even if it didn't change that much, we'd see a lot of new products coming out for learning. Now, I would like to take a few minutes to think about the difference between a chatbot and a tutor bot, because a lot of people think that uh, generative AI could be very helpful for helping, uh, you know, helping students with their assignments and things like that. But the thing is, a chatbot is not a tutor. Chatbots were originally trained on frequently asked questions to give the right answer. So there was a set of questions with answers with them. If it thought your question was close to one of those questions, it gave you the answer. Uh, generative AI, AI is actually an improvement of that. You don't have to put together uh, um, frequently asked questions. You can just give it all the text and it will learn to predict the words for the responses to questions from that text. So as I say, it's good at giving the correct answer. If you're a student, that's fine for administrative queries. But if you're a lecturer, you do want the, the bot to be giving the correct answer to the student. A good tutor works differ, different from that. A good tutor detects where the fault and the reasoning of the learner is and gives them a hint that will help them get past that fault. Maybe in the future, it'll be possible to train uh, a, a tutor bot on tutor hints or something like that. But for the moment, it really hasn't been shown to be effective as a tutor insofar as that it guides and helps the learning of the student. Even Can Migo, which is a, a tutor bot from the Khan Academy, has been shown to have limited effectiveness so far, but it may get better soon. So what uses can we use? As I say, a tutor bot, I'm not sure it's ready for that yet, but there are still lots of users, particularly for the lecture, which is generating a curricular for a well-known domain of knowledge or generating an individual course, an outline of a course, generating individual lectures. Uh, it could generate slides. It could generate text. It could almost generate a textbook. Okay. It can generate slides from text. Uh, it could generate images to go with the slide. It may be even able to generate videos. There is some progress in that recently. Um, uh, if it has the text, it can generate quizzes or other assessment challenges. So it can do a lot for the lecture translating content. If a student is writing in another language, it can trace, translate that content into the language of the lecturer. Uh, grading student submissions. Um, uh, I've put a question mark on that. It remains to be seen how good it is at that yet. And it remains to be seen if students will be able to game it and, and figure out how the, the generative AI is doing that. So we'll see about that. But the, the elephant in the room is to what extent it will allow students cheat. So far, it's very good at doing assignments for students. And so far, plagiarism detection has not been very good at catching that. So if you were to look at this diagram, exams, assignments and projects, 
being most of the way we assess students. Uh, projects being more authentic, more like the real world. Exams being less authentic, but more reliable. And we tend to have a mix of all three. What's happening now with cheating is the assignments are becoming extremely unreliable. So we'll need to reduce probably the number of assignments, essays and reports, maybe increase the number of authentic assignments, but it has to be accepted that we'll probably, a, a lot of lecturers will increase their reliance on exams because of their uh, reliability and their lack of trust in assignments and even their lack of trust in projects. So in the future, we will have to assume that students use AI and either design to take account of that, but probably better to design generative AI into their assessments, assume they use it and make that part of the design. Thanks for watching.